So what platform should you use for your online program? The short answer is, it depends. And I know that's a frustrating answer because you just want me to say this is it. But in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to choose your own platform for your course that's going to work for you. So before we dive into the different types of platforms and the six different things you need to consider when choosing one, I want to answer the question is when should you make this decision? It can be really easy to get lost with the technology, the rabbit trails, all the different to do's when it comes to building an online program. But what I want you to do is go screech, pull on the brakes until you have a super awesome course design, a super solid design blueprint down. So you know all the moving pieces of your course, you know the features that you need, and you know exactly what you're going to create. So if you don't have a super solid course design in place yet, that is okay. I am here to support you. You can reach out and we can chat about it. But if you don't have a design, don't keep watching this video. If you already know what your design is going to be, then let's get started. So when it comes to choosing a platform for your online program, I like to think about a spectrum of the types of options you have available to you. On one side, we have the out of the box solution. So you just open the box, they're ready to go. You can plug and play your content and make some minor customizations. So these are options like Thinkific, Teachable, Member Vault. Those are the ones where you don't have to do a lot of work because they've done it all for you. On the far side of the spectrum, we have the ones where you have to do a lot of work, which is the self-hosted WordPress or Squarespace where you are hosting your program on your own website. Now in the middle is Kajabi, which is a little bit half and half because a lot of it is done for you. There's a lot of templates, but you also have a lot of control over the customization. So on the spectrum, when you are trying to decide what is the best solution for you, there are six main things to consider. So let's dive in. So the very first thing to think about is budget. How much do these solutions cost? Is it a one-time fee? Is it a monthly recurring fee? You know, there are some plugins for your WordPress site, if you're self-hosting, that it's a one-time fee and then you're done. Other times they renew once a month or once a year. Similarly with a subscription or the different payment plans for those more out of the box solutions or including Kajabi, Thinkific, those ones. On top of the budget is thinking about how much of your revenue is going towards processing fees, is going towards user fees from the place or the platform that you're hosting. So these out of the box solutions, because they tend to um, provide more solutions for you and do a lot of the work for you, they often tend to take a slightly higher chunk out of the money you're making, whether it's a cost per student, whether it's a cost per transaction. Whereas a lot of the times, if you self host on your own website, you are respond, you get a hundred percent of what you make minus a credit card processing fee. If you're taking credit card as payments, which is pretty much inevitable in the online space and is the same across the board. So the next thing to think about is integrations. Does your chosen platform play nicely with the other software you use? So this can be your mailing list software. This can be landing pages, sales funnels, affiliate revenue, clicking, tracking, those types of things. You want to think about what does your program include that you're going to need the software to talk to each other. Maybe you want to send little e automated email notes of encouragement to your students. You want to make sure that your chosen platform is going to integrate and play nicely with your mailing list software. Or you also want to look at, does it play nicely with wherever you're hosting your content? Because these out of the box solutions like Thinkific or Teachable, a lot of the time will host your content for you. So you don't need to worry if they integrate with Vimeo or Wistia or even YouTube, because you can just upload all your stuff and you're done. Versus if you're playing on the self-hosted side, then you need to know where are you hosting your content? How much is that going to cost you? And does it play nicely and does it integrate properly? So you want to make sure that things play nicely across the board. The third thing that I want you to think about is brandability. How much control do you have over the look and feel of your learning experience? Is it you can change some colors and add in a logo and that's it? Or do you want to have full custom control where you can make it look exactly the way you want it to look? So on the out of the box solutions, a lot of the time, the amount of brandability, the amount of customization is lower because it's a one size fits all. Here's our templates. This is what things look like. 
On the far side with your self-hosted WordPress, you can pretty much control absolutely everything if you are self are a web designer and know how to do it, or if you have the budget and you can hire someone, which is something to think about in your budget budgeting for the project as well. In the middle with Kajabi, there's a good amount of customization, but it also comes with a higher price tag. And that flows right into my next point, which is learning curve. How much learning do you have to have to be able to make your program happen. Now, if you have the budget and you can outsource to a VA or a web designer or someone to help you put this all together, this isn't as much of a concern for you. But if you are in the DIY, trying to do it all yourself, then you want to think about, do you have the skills? Do you have the time? Do you have the energy to learn something new, whether it's crafting the pages on your website yourself or uploading your content into something that's pretty much ready to go? You need to think about how much time do you want to put into this? and how many new skills do you need to learn along the way? The next thing to think about is sales features. Does your chosen platform allow you to do the type of sales you want to do? Whether that's bundles, that's coupons, is it tiered? Does it flow automatically? Does it split things, the modules, the way you want? Can it do drip content? Thinking about how do you want to deliver your experience? How do you want to make the sales? How do you want to do the discounts or the bonuses or the bundles? Does your chosen platform let you do that? And this is another reason why it's so helpful to have your course design and a bit of a sales plan in mind before you choose your platform so that you don't have everything all set up and then realize your platform can't do what you want it to do. And the final thing that I want you to think about before choosing your online platform is support. Is there a strong support team? Is there a good community? Are you going to be on your own struggling it out? Or are there people on the phone who can help you out, walk you through it, give you the support, even if you don't necessarily have someone on your team? This is why it's so important to research these platforms before you sign up for them so that you can make sure that you're getting the support you need to bring your program to life. So I know I just fired a whole bunch of options at you and a whole bunch of things to consider, but I haven't yet helped you chose the platform that you want to use. So my personal opinion and, you know, sound a little bit like LeVar Burton here, you don't have to take my word for it because it is a personal opinion. And the most important thing is choosing the platform that you like and that you resonate with. So my opinion, my advice to you is if you are brand new, you are just getting started and you've never run this course before is to keep it as low tech and as low intensity as possible. So either run it yourself through a private Facebook group or use one of the out of the box solutions. My personal favorite is Thinkific. They are Canadian woo, and they have an amazing support team, lots of features and a fantastic community. So if you are less on the tech side and just want to get your course out there in the world, highly, highly recommend. Now, if you are feeling like you've been doing this for a while, you've run your course a while, and now you want to take it to the next level, that is where I highly recommend hosting it on your own website, especially if you're a WordPress user, because you get complete control over the look and feel. You can really make it your own. You can customize it. You can really amplify that learner experience. And there's a couple different plugins that help you with this. There is member press and access alley. Those are my two favorites. You can do a ton of stuff with them and a lot of customizations and really enhance that experience. Now, halfway in the middle there is Kajabi. I know I've mentioned them a couple times throughout this video. They also have fantastic customer support. They also can do amazing things, but they come with a significantly higher price tag because you don't need as many integrations because they have so many features. So if you're worried about your budget or you're looking to not make that much of a monthly or an annual commitment, then I would highly recommend either Thinkific or MemberPress, depending on where your level of tech is and how much energy you're ready to invest in this. So like I said, the best platform to use is the one that you'll actually use. So what I, my challenge to you is to sign up for a couple trials. I've included some awesome links for you below. Sign up and test them out, play around, see if it works for you, because you don't wanna choose a platform that you don't wanna be in, that you're like, ugh, I don't wanna look at this. You wanna choose a platform that you're excited to add new content into, that you're excited to use, and you can't wait to share with your people. 
So sign up for some trials and play around. And if you have any questions, you run into any snags, test out that community support and see how they can help you bring your vision to life. So I want to know, was this video helpful? Let me know in the comments below. And if you still have questions, if there's any other way I can support you, please don't hesitate to reach out. I love hearing from you, getting new ideas for videos. Everything I create is for you. And I want to make sure you're getting an amazing experience and the tools and resources you need to take your awesome ideas and bring them to life. So let me know in the comments how I can support you. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can grab all the next goodness that's heading your way. 